Hey everybody. So I'm coming to you right now from Milwaukee, specifically from the North Point Water Tower. Now, when I talk about water towers, probably the pictures going up in your mind are the ones like we have in Nakusa, a great big tank of water on that are elevated up there. And you look at this one, it looks nothing like it. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So 150 years ago in the 1870s, Milwaukee had a problem. It was just starting to grow up to become a big city, but its growth was limited because it didn't have a good water supply. It was getting most of it water, its water from streams and wells, but those could become contaminated easily. Also, most of the buildings back then were made of wood and the firefighters needed a fair amount of water to put fires out before it spread and became a problem. So that's where this came into play. Now, in order to solve this problem, they decided to follow the lead of other emerging big cities at the time, Pittsburgh and Chicago, who pulled their water from a nearby lake or river. In this case, Milwaukee has Lake Michigan right here. So where I'm standing right now, they decided to build a pump house to get that water from Lake Michigan up the hill and to a reservoir. Now, here's a sketch of what that lakeside pumping station looked like back in the day. The reason it had to be so big and why it needed that huge chimney stack is because it was powered by steam engines, just like they had in the earliest locomotives. If you look up at the top of the hill, you can see the North Point water tower depicted here because for the technology of the time, it was a vital part of the system. Now the problem with steam engines is that they don't push water in a steady stream, but instead in a series of pulses that come from the pistons moving up and down. Now the problem with using that to run a water system is that pulsing water moving through big pipes over time would tear those pipes apart and make it so it wouldn't last very long. So if I were to open up these doors and walk into the water tower, what I would see would be a really tall standpipe that took the water being pumped up by those steam engines. As these photos show, if you look up, you can see that metal standpipe going straight up the middle of the tower with a circular metal stair going around the outside. If you were to head up the stairs, you could pause every now and then and look out the ornate Gothic windows that were designed into the tower. The standpipe was a critical part of the steam engine water pumping system. As it received the pulsing water coming from the steam engines, it could vibrate all it wanted without causing any damage to the tower or itself. So as you can see in this sketch, the water traveled all the way up to the top of the standpipe, which is marked by this line. This next line on the sketch shows the elevation of a nearby reservoir. Because of the height difference between these two lines, the water would flow from the top of the standpipe, first to the reservoir and then to the rest of the city with no damage to any of the pipes. So while all that explains the need for this kind of water tower, what it doesn't explain is the amazing craftsmanship and detail that went into building this building that is way beyond what was just strictly necessary. So right now in your classes, I'd like you to discuss how we can follow the lead of the designers of the North Point Water Tower and do more than just the minimum today. Instead, put in that extra effort to make something special. What is an area at school or at home that you're going to work hard at today? And how can you go the extra mile in that area to help that work make more of a difference? So even though the results of that extra work you're putting in today might not be around 150 years later like this is, 
it'll be something that will give you satisfaction and something you'll be proud of because you put yourself into it. All right, you take care.